Hi, my name's Scott, and uh, I am definitely a firm believer in arginine. Um, I'm a registered nurse by trade, have been for about 36 years. Long time, probably too long. But I have a family history of cardiovascular disease. My father died too young. My, all of my aunts and uncles died too young. My grandparents died too young. And um, I don't want to die too young. About a year ago, lo and behold, my doctor announced to me that she thought I had cardiovascular disease. Um, surprise, I was eating all the wrong foods. Uh, I was uh, stressed out at work. Um, all, of the, all of the wrong things were happening to me at the time. She recommended an angiogram. I said, no, 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 that's invasive, uh-uh. Treadmill, I'll go for. Angiogram, no way. So she talked me into the treadmill and uh, I knew I was feeling bad and not doing well. My ankles were starting to swell. I knew I just wasn't feeling good. So I have the treadmill and lo and behold, the doc says, guess what, my friend, you've had a heart attack. I said, well, I haven't had any real serious chest pain, a little <coughs> here and there. He said, well, guess what? You're having an angiogram, whether you like it or not. So I said, okay, let's go. Let's have the angiogram. And lo and behold, one of the descending vessels in my heart was 99% blocked. And it had actually caused a little dead spot on my heart without me knowing it. And lo and behold, I have a 55% blockage uh, in another one of the vessels in my heart. No wonder I wasn't feeling too good. Well, uh, luckily I had a really good, uh, have a really good internist. And one of the, her recommendations, because I wanted to go with uh, more natural substances rather than all of the prescriptions they suddenly threw at me, she recommended uh, arginine. And I wrote that down and I promptly forgot about it. She wrote down several other things uh, that, would be, that would be good. And uh, we were visiting some friends of ours one day and they had a bottle of pro sitting on their counter. And I said to my wife, Cinda, who uh, is always looking out for me, I said, isn't that the stuff that my doctor said I should take, arginine? And she says, I think it is. And I said, well, let's buy some. So we bought some, we got started on the arginine. I started right off with four scoops a day. About two months ago, I had a, an opportunity to change cardiologists. I went to a new guy and I had a whole cardiac workup and he said, and I quote, he said, your heart right now is getting all the circulation it needs. I have no reason to even suspect that you need another angiogram I couldn't justify an angiogram right now if I had to. So I'm not 100% sure that those blockages are completely gone, but I'm up, I'm hiking, I'm playing golf, I'm going to work, I'm doing all the things that I love to do. I've modified my diet somewhat, and I drink an awful lot of Nine Plus, and I love it. And uh, I don't miss, because I want to be around for a long time. I've got new grandbabies, and I've got a beautiful wife that I care very much about, and I just want to be here for them. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in that study. In fact, maybe let's even go back a little bit and, and tell us a little bit about your health condition that led you to seek out the help of Dr. Siva and the High Desert Heart Institute. Well, ever since I come up here, I've, I've had heart problems, primarily starting out with atrial fibrillation and then ultimately I required a pacemaker to be uh, put in. Um, what happened is in December, actually December 20th to be specific, of 2008, I had a, a renal failure, congestive heart failure, and pacemaker failure concurrently. And it necessitated my being sent to the hospital uh, paramedics came and I went into the hospital and uh, they ultimately decided they were going to have to do surgery and it was supposed to be very dangerous because I'd been also because of my atrial fibrillation I'd been taking blood thinner so taking and doing surgery at that time was going to be very dangerous they told my wife to 
to make that decision for me because I wasn't able to do it at the time I was really out. And uh, she did. She thought after listening to everything, the best thing for me to do is go ahead and try the surgery, which they did. And uh, that went successful. Uh, the surgery was fine. Uh, after I got out of the hospital for the next five to six weeks, I was in the hospital about two to three days minimum every week as a result of congestive heart failure. It basically was the real primary reason is that nothing was happening. I had been taking all the medications possible. I was medically managed to the maximum extent. And finally, I gave up. Quite honestly, I'd had enough. I got weak. I was on oxygen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I couldn't walk 15 feet without stopping. I couldn't even open up a bottle of water. My wife used to have to open the bottles of water for me. I was very concerned also with medical costs, and I was concerned that I didn't know what these bills were going to be because I hadn't received them yet, but I didn't want to empty the well out, so to speak, and, and I didn't want any good money spent after bad, if you will. So uh, I decided to take myself out of the hospital. I asked them to remove all the IVs, and they told me that if I went home, I would die. And I said, just give me the papers I need, and I'll go home, because if I'm going to die, that's where I want to be anyway. Coincidentally, that was on a Sunday, and I had a pre-scheduled meeting, meeting appointment with the um, congestive heart failure clinic on Monday. And Dan Austin, who is the clinical director there, and Dr. Siva recommended that I go on a study. Well, I was just a little bit set back that they'd been doing everything they could. I felt, you know, what are you going to do with a dietary supplement? And in all truthfulness, I didn't really think it was going to work, but they also told me they were going to do a tremendous amount of testing. Well, the testing really hit me because they said it was going to be free, and so I could see that the medical bills were not going to be rising, and so consequently I went ahead and said, let's do it, because I was more interested in seeing what was going to be happening to me, whether I had a week to live or seven days or two days. I, could, I was expecting things to go down, and I wanted to have access to all of that information. So I did what they said, and uh, there were 35 people total. And uh, in a few short weeks, I began to actually feel better. I wasn't sure at that time whether I was feeling better or I was thinking I was feeling better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but actually, I was feeling better. By the end of three months, I felt really pretty good. Uh, by the end of the third month, I was doing things that I hadn't been able to do for years. My wife is the one who told me that she believed that I had more energy than I ever had in my life. What, what advice would you have for others in your situation who may have physicians or caregivers that are telling them that the, really there's no hope or there's nothing they can do? I mean, that they aren't aware of the, the Nobel Prize research. They're not aware of things like this High Desert Institute. What would you say to, say, a corporate friend or somebody that you've known throughout the country who says, oh, I'm, I need to talk to my cardiologist, and, and he says that he doesn't think there's anything that can, can help me? What would be your advice to someone like that at this point in, in their life? Well, actually that has happened many times as I've gone to tell a lot of people about it. There's many people who have come to me and asked me how I got well because they knew I was ready to die. In fact, I have several friends who never even came to see me anymore because they didn't want to see me get worse. Um, one of my dear friends, John Snyder, is one who saw me from day one and continued to see me, but he, as much as I know that we like each other. He didn't want to come to see me anymore because it was just too hard for him to see me going down. So basically what I've told people is that, hey, this worked for me. I've read everything. I've researched it. They know me. I'm very, I do an extensive research on everything that I do. And a lot of them trusted my judgment. 
And once they trusted my judgment to get on it, they went on it, they found out from themselves, and they were telling other people about it and coming back to me. So uh, there hasn't been anybody who hasn't taken it that hasn't felt well. The only advice I really have to get back to your question is I'd try it. I, I think that if you have nothing else but if you're in bad shape, try it because you don't have anything to lose. If you're in good shape, try it because I have a grandson who is training to be a Navy SEAL. And he saw what I was taking, and he said he wanted to take it. And I said, you don't need this stuff. You're as physically fit as you can be. And he says, Grandpa, I want to take it. He says, it made you well. He says, it may give me more energy. He took it, and after a week, he called me, and he said, he's never had so much energy. He can run further. He can run faster. He can swim further. He can swim faster. And he can do more pull-ups and push-ups than he could before. And that's in one week. So he's got all his friends taking it as well. So uh, all I can say is, is try it.